If you follow my channel, you know I'm not a political guy, nor do I plan to be. But there is one issue I do speak openly about that is usually associated with politics, even though it really shouldn't be, since it is more of a question of science and ethics than anything else. I am, of course, speaking about nothing other than abortion. I want to be clear up front. My critique of the pro-abortion community is not an attack on women who have been lied to or pressured into having an abortion. In the society we live in, Many women who have found out they are pregnant are told they have no options and an abortion is their only way out. Faced with such challenges and the lack of knowledge of the help that is offered, it is easy to fall into the belief an abortion is their only hope. I don't want to attack these women since dealing with the emotions and lack of help can cause anyone to do something irrational. Most pro-life organizations simply want to help these women and offer support. No, this is an attack on the pro-choice or pro-abortion crowd. The people who think it's okay for any woman to have an abortion just because they want to, that abortion is not murder and the act of an abortion is perfectly fine and doesn't harm anyone. This is one of the most unscientific beliefs out there today, which is why the pro-abortion crowd doesn't address the scientific arguments from the pro-life community and instead relies on appeals to emotion and straw man arguments. We are constantly told that the pro-life community just wants to take away a woman's right to choose and is a religiously motivated government power grab to remove the woman's right to her own body. Which is such a blatant misrepresentation of the facts, it is hard to know where to begin in addressing this direct lie. First, this only shows they have not remotely attempted to listen to the reasons for being pro-life or have ever talked with the pro-life community. Because if this was just a religiously motivated attack on women, then secular women like Kelsey Hazard, Lauren Nicholson, Albany Rose, Ellen Snyder, Teresa Lopez, Amelia Lynn must be in on a grand conspiracy to attack their own gender and force a religious view on their fellow women they don't even hold to. Why are these women pro-life? Well, the reasons are none other than ethical and above all scientific. All the evidence demonstrates quite easily that human life begins at conception, not at birth. According to everything science has revealed, this is just as much of a human as this is. Marjorie England says, Development of an embryo begins at stage one, when a sperm fertilizes an oocyte, and together they form a zygote. Almost all higher animals start their lives from a single cell, the fertilized zygote. The time of fertilization represents the starting point in the life history or ontogeny of the individual. The development of a human begins with fertilization, a process by which the spermatozoan from the male and the oocyte from the female unite to give rise to a new organism, the zygote. In fact, I could cite dozens of papers that all point out the obvious thing. Life begins at conception. Life begins at conception. Life begins at conception, at conception, at conception, at conception, and on and on I could go. There is not a scientific paper out there that says life begins later on or at birth. The zygote is composed of its own human DNA and human future. As Christopher Hitchens said, um, I believe that the concept unborn child is a real concept, yes. Um, and I've had a lot of quarrels with uh, some of my fellow materialists and secularists on this point. I think that if the concept child means anything, the concept unborn child can be said to mean something. And actually all the discoveries of um, embryology, uh, which have been very considerable in the last generation or so, and of viability, appear to confirm uh, that opinion, which is I think it should be innate in everybody, is innate in the Hippocratic Oath, is instinct in anyone who's ever watched a sonogram. So an embryo is undeniably human in not some subhuman form. Life begins at conception, so by logic, no one is trying to attack a woman's right to her body, because this is not her body. It is a new human with its own body currently developing, just like a three-month-old is and a three-year-old is until the pro-abortion crowd can provide any scientific evidence that a fetus is part of the woman's body, they cannot say the pro-life movement is an attack on a woman's use of her body. What if this innocent child developing is a woman as well? Doesn't she have a right to her body? Supposing we go off this unfounded principle that the fetus is the mother's body, aren't there also situations in which even abortion advocates themselves would say it is immoral to have an abortion? For instance, what if a fanatic mother prefers to have an abortion just because the fetus will grow up to be a girl? What if in the future it could be determined in the womb 
whether someone will grow up to be gay or straight. Wouldn't abortion advocates say that in those situations, it is immoral for the mother to kill the gay fetus just because the mother doesn't want to have a child that's gay? We would view such a practice as unjust, immoral, and cruel. But why? Does this mean the fetus has rights in those circumstances which supersede the rights of the mother? If the fetus is just a clump of cells, it shouldn't have any rights. If on the other hand we recognize these situations to be immoral because a gay or straight fetus has some future potential which is valuable, then how is this different from any other fetus? Shouldn't we recognize that all fetuses per se have some intrinsic worth? So the fact remains, the basis of the pro-life movement is the science of when life begins and moral responsibility to protect the innocent from harm and death. Why can't the pro-abortion crowd actually address our arguments, instead of creating an unscientific straw man in a direct lie of what constitutes as part of the woman's body? Of course, when you bring this scientific evidence up to people who are okay with the murder of a child, they will ignore it and appeal to philosophy. Now where have I seen this tactic before of ignoring science and appealing to philosophy? If it doesn't work with young earth theories, it won't work here as well. But they try to say, well, a fetus is not a person. The genetic existence of a human may begin a conception, but it is not a person yet. But to do this would just be to make up an ad hoc definition. It is not relying on a scientific foundation or evidence. It is just an ad hoc attempt to define what you want to be a person and not a person. And this doesn't prove anything. And this philosophical view can lead to very devastating consequences. One only needs to open a history book and see what happened the last time a group of people decided another group of people were not actually people and not worthy of life and liberty. When you just decide you get to define what is a person and what isn't, without a scientific or ethical foundation, you will open the door to some pretty terrible possibilities. That should be obvious. We don't get to simply just define what a person is based on how we feel. I propose an objective standard to decide this, and the only standard rational individuals can agree on would be science, and science is pretty obvious on what constitutes as human life. Of course, the pro-abortion crowd will usually just throw out some ad hoc reason a fetus is not a person, without realizing the implications that would follow if they were right, as well as do it without a good reason for accepting their conclusions. For example, some will say a fetus is not a person because it has to depend on the mother for life. Well, there are also certain people that are only alive because they are on life support. Does that mean they lose their personhood when they need to depend on something else for existence? And nothing in science or ethics says personhood changes if someone has to depend on someone else for their existence. Where is that written down? Some say because the fetus is not conscious yet, it is not a person. And how do they know this? Because they do not have the experience or knowledge of you or me? Lack of knowledge doesn't mean someone is not a person. People in vegetative states have very low IQs, and no one says they are not persons. What about people in deep sleep? Do they cease to be persons just because they do not display signs of consciousness, then suddenly become persons when they wake up? In consciousness, it's much harder to define, and we have good evidence it is fundamental and not a later developed process. So for instance, let's suppose we define a person to be someone who is capable of intentional action. Well, guess what? Science is not on the side of abortion advocates in this case either. Even though consciousness in fetuses is very hard to study, by 14 weeks of age, there is undeniable evidence that fetuses display intentions and by definition would be persons. So for instance, studies have found that fetuses have goal-directed intentional actions. Abortion advocates often counter by denying the science and claiming that these movements are not conscious, but are just reflexes. Sort of like when one's knee is struck with a reflex hammer. But once again, the science is not on their side. In a 2010 study published in the journal of PLOS Medicine, researchers analyzed the movement patterns of 14 old weak fetuses to determine whether they reached for their face, for their eyes, or towards their twin. They displayed a pattern consistent with intentional movement. The researchers found that the movement of the fetuses did have a phase of deceleration, which means they slowed their hands down incrementally as they reach their goal. When humans reach for an object, their hand has to decelerate as they reach out. For instance, when you reach for your eyes, if your hands do not decelerate, you could damage your eyes if your hand makes contact at full speed. The same conscious behavior was seen in fetuses. Furthermore, other authors have found that detailed observational studies 
of fetal behavior using real-time ultrasonography also demonstrate an exploratory sensation testing nature of fetal action from as early as 10 weeks gestational age. At this stage of development, some areas of the body are innervated with sensory nerve fibers and others are not. Those that are innervated, such as the lips, cheeks, ears, and parietal bone, are frequently touched by the hands, the fingers of which are themselves richly innervated. Fetuses have been observed exploring the boundaries of the innervated and uninnervated regions, particularly at the anterior fontanelle of the forehead, where innervation ceases. As the nervous innervation of the forehead increases and the boundary migrates during development, so the fetus's exploration of this region migrates with the boundary. So even if we think science can determine whether someone is a person, and persons are defined as agents capable of intentional actions, then our best scientific evidence shows that first trimester fetuses are persons. Plus, all of this is just arbitrary attempts to define a person anyway. Nothing about it is scientific or logical. So why should we take the abortion crowd seriously when this is the best they can do, and all the science is on our side? My favorite argument the pro-abortion crowd tries is to say an abortion is not immoral because it is currently legal. This is just utterly ridiculous. Governments are not perfect judges of morality, and trying to appeal to them as a just decider of morality really shows they are not thinking at all. If they really believe something is okay, just because the government says so, then I expect them to agree with everything the government does from now on. But we all know they don't, and they are only appealing to governmental laws because it suits them, not because they actually think legality makes something moral. Another silly argument is when you are asked, what if you were in a burning building and you only had the chance to save a crying infant or 100 fertilized eggs? If you choose the baby, then you must really not think eggs are human life. Yeah, because high-strung situations where you're in a panic for your life are the best situations to make rational decisions about what is life and what isn't. Just because most people would grab the baby in that situation, that doesn't mean the fertilized eggs are not human lives. Quick emotional decisions in terrifying situations are no way to judge what is a scientific fact about the beginning of life. So the fact remains, life begins at conception, and nothing the pro-abortion community can offer provides any reason that this unborn child doesn't have a right to life like the rest of us. These appeals to emotion do nothing to address the science on the issue. Abortions should only be used as a last resort in extreme situations when the life and health of the mother is threatened. Most people in the pro-life community recognize an abortion may be a necessary procedure to save the life of the mother if there are serious complications. It is not a necessary evil we want, but once we remember Thomas Aquinas' doctrine of double effect, we can remember sometimes choices like this must be made. The doctrine of double effect is simply an action you think you ought to do that will have a good and bad effect, hence a double effect. In the case of an abortion where the life of the mother is at stake, we are not intentionally trying to end the life of the child. We are trying to save the mother, but it creates a double effect. One effect being something we do not want, but it is necessary to also bring about the good, which is saving the life of the mother. So ethical dilemmas like this can be avoided with the doctrine of double effect. To wrap up, I want to emphasize I'm not condemning anyone who has had an abortion without the knowledge of what they are doing. The intention is only to attack people who say it is okay to have an abortion if the mother just feels like it. There is something seriously wrong with that line of thinking, as all the science demonstrates a fetus is a human life. And notice that although I am a Christian, I didn't argue from the Bible or any other religious text, despite pro-abortion advocates claiming that is how we argue. If anyone says the only argument used to support pro-life ideas are biblical, then they are only shown they have never really taken the time to actually study our arguments, despite calling themselves reasonable scientists who investigate everything. One last thing. A common lie is we need to allow women to have abortions because having the choice helps a woman's mental health and well-being. Well, this is false. In studies in Finland that looked at the medical literature, pointed out suicide rates increased six-fold for women who have had an abortion. Abortions not only murder an innocent life, they lead to depression and suicidal tendencies in women. It is time we move past this barbaric practice and stand up for the life of the unborn child and the mental health of women everywhere.